Hello, welcome to Baby Boomer Tales. My name is Jim. I'm glad that you can be with me today. You can find us on the internet at babyboomertales.com. There's a link there where you can follow us on Twitter. There's also a link to our shop tales on Amazon store where we give you great suggestions on what you can purchase through Amazon including barbecue sauces from around the United States. Go ahead and click the link and see what you think. Thank you for browsing. Please come back again. On February 20th, 2019, we did a podcast. It was episode 4. It was called Saturday Morning Cartoons. That podcast covered when I was a child getting up on Saturday morning and having sugar cereal and sitting in front of the TV for hours, watching the likes of Augie Doggy and Doggy Daddy, Quick Draw McGraw, Huckleberry Hound, Yogi Bear, The Flintstones, The Jetsons, Bugs Bunny and Woody Woodpecker, Rocky and Bullwinkle, and more. I'd sit there for hours and hours and look forward to Saturday mornings all week long. What I didn't talk about on that episode was Saturday morning shows that were not cartoons, so I thought I'd cover those today. The list is not as long as the cartoons, but let me start with a western, and there were a lot of westerns, just like on prime time there were a lot of westerns in the 50s and early 60s on Saturday morning. First one, The Roy Rogers Show, ran from 1951 through 1957. We had Roy and Trigger and Dale and Buttermilk, their dog Bullet, and the guy driving the Jeep was named Pat. From 1949 to 1957, The Lone Ranger rode with his faithful Indian companion Tonto. I don't think The Lone Ranger could have made it without Tonto. hi Silver! Away! That white horse would rear up, and the ranger is hanging on for dear life, waving at us as he rode off into the sunset. From 1951 through 1958, The Adventures of Wild Bill Hickok. Wild Bill and Jingles. Jingles was played by Andy Devine. From 1947 to 1960 is The Howdy Doody Show. Buffalo Bob Smith, Howdy and Clarabelle the Clown, among others. Clarabelle was played by a guy named Bob Keeshan, who later became Captain Kangaroo. From 1954 to 1957, the show was called Annie Oakley. It was set in the western town called Diablo. It was Annie and her little brother Tag. Sky King ran from 1951 through 1962. Sky and his airplane... From out of the clear blue of the western sky comes Sky King. From 1955 through 1960, Fury. Fury was a horse, and he had to save young Joey too many times to count. He was kind of like Lassie, only he was a horse. Peter Graves, better known for his role in Mission Impossible, was in that show. 1955 through 1958. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. Well, this is a western set way up north in Canada with a Mountie dressed in red with his flat-brimmed hat. His horse was named Rex. His dog was named Yukon King. And the last one I have here, it was a short list. There may be more shows that were syndicated, maybe reruns. They were no longer on a network, so they ended up on Saturday morning. But this one... Watch Mr. Wizard, 1951 through 1965. He had a long run. He would show us how to mix chemicals together and whatever. Mr. Wizard. TV when we were a kid was an amazing thing. And Saturday morning was almost like a holiday every Saturday. We don't see that now. I do not know if they have special Saturday morning cartoons anymore. There's so many cartoons and cartoon networks. It was a special time for anyone that's a baby boomer, at least. Now, for a short story called Making Forts and Avoiding Lava. When my brothers and I were very young, and my parents, J. 
just built our home up on the hill. We lived in the basement for years before they got enough together to build the upstairs. And my brothers and I shared one little small bedroom downstairs. And then the other bedroom was for my folks. And I think that if my sister was born before we moved upstairs, she had to stay in my parents' room. But John and Don and I shared a bedroom and we had two sets of bunk beds in the bedroom. Later on, we moved upstairs and we still had those two sets of bunk beds in our bedroom that all three of us shared. And we shared those until I became probably a teenager where I moved back into the basement. But the three of us spent years and years and years in those bunk beds. We'd put blankets up around them and that was a perfect fort. Sometimes we'd jump from one set of bunk beds to the other set. And if we touched the floor, we'd be dead from hot lava killing us. When we got upstairs to that bigger bedroom, it was more of a jump across the bedroom to hit into that safety of the fort we had built, and we wouldn't get boiled alive by the lava. We'd also play fort in my mom and dad's living room. We'd take the couches and scoot a chair over and put blankets all on top of the furniture, and we'd honker down in there expecting the enemy to come any time that would been my mom telling us to put the furniture back and go play that game in our room we get under the dining room table and we stack the chairs up and we put that blanket over there no one could get us when we we're in the safety of the fort it was our safe place that's a fact we would jump around on mom's couch we had a big old couch for about five feet it went along the wall and then it curved around and went on a 45 degree angle so it was sticking like a big l shape and then we could jump from that couch onto where my dad and mom sat there are two chairs in the same room and we could jump from that and if we'd screw up or when you're jumping one of your brothers would grab your foot and you'd plant your face right in the hot lava on that carpet in our living room and the other two brothers would just laugh and think that was so funny and here you are ah hey i'm boiling i'm melted i'm dead or something like that you know sometimes we'd pull a chair over so we could maybe jump onto that and jump onto another like a dining room chair trying to make it to the recliner make no mistake about it you could fall into the lava without your brothers pushing you though if you just weren't paying attention so you really had to watch that lava maybe you could get back to the safety of the fort if you could jump real good and mom didn't walk into the room and ask what the heck you were doing weren't you told to go into your room and play that game something like that Mom was pretty tolerant of us. I think we overwhelmed her most of the time on deals like that. If it was a rainy day or middle of the winter. When it's 35 below outside, she really didn't push us outside. But she didn't stop us if we wanted to go either. I don't know what kids do today. I very much doubt if they play hot lava and fort. But I do know if you give a small enough kid a big box, he can play with it for hours. Video games and television and computers have really taken a lot of the excitement away from such activities. I guess it's more fun to push a joystick and have Mario trying to jump over the lava than you doing it yourself. I don't know if I was a kid today if I'd rather jump or push a button and see how far I can make the little character on the screen jump. I'd probably be like the kids today. But there's nothing quite like getting together with you two brothers, figuring out a game plan, finding some blankets that aren't on everybody's bed so you can use them, grandma's afghan, all that stuff, building forts that couldn't be brought down by the biggest enemy the world has ever known, and then venturing out and trying to avoid falling into the abyss. It was great fun. And it stretched our imaginations, and it helped us grow, and it helped us participate in such a wonderful childhood. 
I wouldn't trade it for all the tea in China. I wouldn't even trade it for all the coffee in the grocery store. Well, Homer, that was a pretty good day fishing. Yeah, Homer, that was a good day fishing. I caught four brook trout. I caught five brook trout. How many did you catch, Homer? Now, Jerry, I told you, I told you that I don't keep track of how many fish I catch. It's how I whisper to them, and I whispered to them for you guys to catch them today. Yep, that's what I did. I whispered, go catch Jerry. Go catch Pop. That's what I told them. And they caught you guys, didn't they? There's proof. Four there and five there. I don't even care because I've got something going on here at camp. It's looking pretty good. We've got three tents. One for me, one for you, and one for old Pop over there. That's because Pop didn't want to share a tent. Because he snores. And you didn't want to share a tent because you are you. I know, Jerry. I know. And I like to not share a tent unless Katie's here camping, which she does not want to have any part of camping up here, up in the hills here, where it's nice and cool and the stars shine. She likes to go camping in those places where you hook up a motorhome and have showers and stuff, not bathing in a creek. Are we going to bathe in a creek, Jerry? Homer, come on. What's on your mind, Homer? Well, I've been thinking, and you know, I do a lot of that, and I'm going to invent something. I see these three tents, and they're right around. We've got the campfire circled here, and I'm thinking about pulling out. In fact, I think I'm going to pull it out right now. Hold on, let me pull it out here. Homer, what are you doing? Homer, stop! Homer, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Okay, okay, okay. That's enough. Why did you pull that big old tarp out, Homer? Well, it's like this. We're going to put it on top of our tents, and we're going to stick this big old lodgepole stick in the middle of it, and we're going to incorporate all three of the tents, and we're going to make a fort. Going to make a fort. Remember when we made a fort when we were kids? That's what we're going to do. Homer, you've lost your mind. No, Pop. No, I'm serious. This will be fun. We'll be all, like, included and stuff. And when I get back to some city, I'm going to put it down on paper and submit it for a patent. What are you talking about a patent? This is a tarp you try to put on top of a campfire and some tents. Homer, leave me alone. I want to cook my fish. Yeah, Homer, what are you thinking? Disrupt our whole campsite? Don't you remember, Jerry, when you were a boy and you played fort with the blankets? I do remember that, Homer. I remember that real well, and I don't want to play it today. Okay, you guys win. Is there any grape knee high in that cooler? I'd like to have a grape knee high. Homer, I think you probably need something a little stronger. <laughs> Three grape knee highs coming up, Homer. I'm sorry we're not going to use your tarp for that, but if it starts raining, you can put that tarp right over your tent so you make sure you don't have a leak. Guys, can I have a fish for dinner? I hate to just have to have these beans. Homer, you can have two of my fish. That shows you what kind of a father-in-law I am. Share my fish with the guy that wants to cover my fire. You know, guys, I have fun when I go fishing with you guys. You never know what you're going to pull. Us pull, Homer. Homer, we never know what you're going to pull. Ever. Isn't that right, Sparky? <coughs> well, that'll about do it for this week. Thank you for traveling along with me. Glad we didn't fall into any lava. Always remember that kindness is the single most important act you can show to another human being. I'll be back next week.